Probably one of the biggest lies that we have all been told is that the Earth is a globe and we are spinning millions of miles through space. We've also been told that all of the land on our modern day maps is all there is, but that's just not the case. Today, we're gonna get into flat Earth, the firmament, UFOs, Atlantis, the Antarctic Treaty, NASA, and Operation High Jump. Everybody meet Admiral Richard Byrd. Now he went on a six month expedition to Antarctica for the government called Operation High Jump. He discovered land beyond the ice wall, proving that we have all been lied to. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. This is a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left down at the bottom of the world. So Bird comes out publicly on TV and tells the world that there is undiscovered land beyond the ice wall. A few years later, the Antarctic Treaty was signed. The 56 Antarctic Treaty nations represent about two thirds of the world's human population. Not only that, NASA was formed. Don't worry guys, the government will tell you the truth. Why would they lie to us, you ask? Because Satan doesn't want us to know that the Bible holds the truth. The world tells us that the earth rotates on its axis at 1,039 miles per hour, and that the earth orbits the sun at 66,666 miles per hour. This contradicts God's word. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. Scientists discover Earth's Star Trek style invisible shield. This is why the government and now Elon have all their cool rockets because they are forever trying to penetrate God's firmament. This is on JFK's plane. There's a flat earth map. This is a map from 1587. This is actually in a map collection at Stanford University. Imagine what they know. Imagine the lies that we don't even know about yet. Imagine what they have at the Vatican, in the Vatican archives. Imagine what they have under the Smithsonian. We are a closed flat earth system with a dome firmament. We are not a globe traveling millions of miles through space. We are not spinning at 66,666 miles per hour. There is a very real demonic marine kingdom at the depths of our oceans, and there are very real demonic cities underground, and Satan will continue to lie because Satan's biggest deception is convincing the world that he doesn't exist. Oh, so you want to know what would happen if the demons were successful in breaking the firmament? Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so now you know we already have to go to my favorite scripture in Genesis chapter 1. It's 6, and it says, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the what? Waters. Waters above us, and there's water below us. And that little dome that he created over us is called the firmament. But that's just a literary device, right? Like God was just being poetic and stuff. Mm, no, no. Let's go to an example so I can show you where the floodgates actually open. And it's in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I already know what you're going to say. Why you got to use the Bible? Uh, that's the whole point of the page. Yeah. And boom, chapter seven. Here we are, Noah's Ark. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. The Great Flood. Now, here's the part that I need you to listen to. It's a little bit long, but hang in there, okay? It says, in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, this is just all just saying that God is precise and he picked the exact moment when it was going to rain and when the floods were going to happen, okay? How did they come, though? The same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and it rained 40 days and 40 nights. So, 
I can say this with great confidence that if the dome is ever pierced, we would drown. Now we won't because of God's promise to Noah that he would never send a great flood, one that was so massive enough that it would destroy the entire world again. So that's not going to happen under God's watch. But why are they doing it then? The short story is, is that the places of power also comes with the attraction of a lot of evil spirits. And these evil spirits want to return back to heaven to continue the fight that was started before Judgment Day takes place. So they're trying to get out. They're not really worried about the water because they have uh, a bigger fate that's coming their way. So they need to get out ASAP. This is what's going on. Welcome to the world. Now we all remember the Red Bull Edge of Space Junk, right? Like seriously, bro, how could you be a flat earther when we have videos and pictures of him up there? There's the curvature. Hmm. What if I told you that's not curvature that you're seeing, but a wide angle lens which curves horizontal lines. But even Neil deGrasse Tyson came out publicly and on video stating you can't see curvature at 128,000 feet. Let me get this straight. So you're saying we're seeing curvature here, but not here? So the next time you're about to say we see curvature from here, but not here, please stop yourself. And of course, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is strictly my opinion. Without a doubt, this is the number one question I get asked. Where's the edge? Find the edge, bro. If you ask any flat earther, we don't believe in an edge. For all we know, they could be hiding more land from us. Like extraterrestrial, terra meaning land or territory. But if you guys didn't know, there's a thing called the Antarctic Treaty. You may ask, well, what does the treaty say? The provisions of the present treaty shall apply to the area south of the 60th South Latitude. Before all you guys say, oh, you can go to Antarctica. I'm not saying you can't. You can on a guided tour. What I am saying is that you can't independently go out there and explore. Hey, so what are you thinking? Well, so I was thinking... The first person on the moon would have actually been Neil Armstrong's cameraman, right? Plus, how would the moon landing have been live streamed in 1969 if when you look it up, Google even says the first live stream was in 1993? Well, and where are all the stars in the background? And what... What exactly was going on with those shadows? Not to mention, the flag was waving. Plus, there is no way that Apollo 11 would have made it through the Van Allen belts. If we went back then, why haven't we been back since? In that iconic photo of Armstrong in his suit, wouldn't you see someone taking the picture of him in the visor, the reflection, you know? It almost makes you think it was all set up just to win the space race against the Soviet Union. Right, the Earth is flat. I want to show you something to sort of prove. You can't see the Earth's curvature, can you? See this messy bar? If I line that up with... See, look, there's no curvature there. The Earth is flat. And if I was here long enough, that boat was going over there, the boat would disappear. But it doesn't disappear, it'll just go out. It goes that far out, it becomes a minute little dot. So again, line this bar up, flat, flat, see it, see it just above the bar, flat all the way along, no difference in width, no difference in width all along, the earth is flat, I can't believe people believe it's round, I've had a debate with somebody, they reckon, oh no, you're totally wrong, it's, it's, it's mind blowing how many people actually believe that it's round. Ridiculous. Where's he off to? Oi, oi, so low. Look, flat. See it flat. Okay, class, today we're going to be talking about the firmament. Well, what even is the firmament? In biblical cosmology, the firmament is the vast solid dome created by God during the Genesis creation narrative to separate the primal sea into upper and lower portions so that the dry land could appear. Hmm. 
So this is saying that the firmament is a crystalline dome over us, separating the waters above from the waters below. Now, if you just go to Antarctica, which of course we're not allowed to go to Antarctica, you can see proof of the firmament moving overhead. So that means the universe is within the firmament and outside of the firmament is the heavens. So physical reality can only exist within the firmament. But of course, this video was for entertainment purposes only. If you're telling us the truth, mm -hmm. everyone, the entire American public, has been lied to for decades. Yeah, there's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the US populace, which is extremely unethical and immoral. You are saying to the human race, for the first time, an official intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of what? Well, naturally, um, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, um, sometimes you encounter um, dead pilots. And uh, believe it or not, as, fan as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. So it looks like we're about to see the start of the next PSYOP, guys. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by all the reports that you're seeing of alien sightings, UFO sightings, jets being scrambled. This is all another PSYOP. It's another part of the movie that they're showing us in order to shoehorn us into doing things that we wouldn't normally want to do. So governments can play the saviour in this fake alien invasion but in order for them to do that there will have to be more restrictions on our freedoms probably a digital currency and a social credit score as well they're getting desperate now and they're using all kinds of tactics block project blue beam go and research it this has been known for many years from alternative researchers that they're going to do this so don't be fooled by all the ufo bs that you're going to see in the next few months did you know that we have underwater drones did you know that there are unmanned underwater submarines floating around? They're called UUVs, unmanned underwater vehicles, and some of them can fly. Uh, there's technical papers out there about making something that can come out of a sub bay in a submarine. It could either go out and act as a weapon or it can act as a sensor, and they can leave the water and fly around and come back down and be brought back into the submarine. These are technical papers that have been out for decades. And you can link that in with a lot of different things like like uh, uh, Maxwell, um, I don't know if I could even really say her name. You know, you know the Maxwell I'm talking about with the, uh, there was an island and there was a guy that had an island. You know what I'm talking about. Well, she had a passport to an imaginary underwater world called Terramar that nobody has ever heard of. Had a passport to it, had credentials for Terramar. And she had a submarine license. Why? Why, why, is, why are intelligence assets of foreign governments floating around under the water and uh uh yeah it, put it all together guys there's other there's other governments and entities out there that have things underwater that they siphoned off from u.s industry and the military they developed on their own in private and now they're pretending in congress like they don't know where it's coming from they know damn well where it's coming from Aliens in the ocean. Now let's think about this for a second. There was a possessed man in a village that no one could help. Jesus came along and asked that man what his name was. He said, my name is Legion. We are many. God decided to cast those demons out of that man. And the demon said, please don't send us out into the world. Put us into those pigs. Once they were in the pigs, the pigs ran down the hill and threw themselves into the ocean. On another note, Jesus walked on the ocean. Was that to show authority over the kingdom below? When Lucifer was cast from heaven to earth, 
Did he go to the darkest place he could find? Which is the bottom of the ocean? Now their government is saying that aliens live in our ocean. And I'm pretty sure they're just trying to admit that there is demons. The unseen. We don't fight against flesh and blood. But we fight against the unseen. There's going to come a time where these aliens or demons start to manifest themselves to where you can see them. And this is why it's very important for us to be armored up. God says put on the full breastplate, your helmet, have your sword ready, get your shoes on, and make sure that belt is tight. There's a war coming, and it's not man on man. It's the man against spiritual world that we cannot see. So let the government admit that there's aliens in the ocean. They've been here since the beginning of time. And now it's time for our father to step in and rid them of this world. Trust in God. Call on Jesus. That is the only thing that can save us. Remember, God loves you. Jesus died to save you. And he's coming back. Tin foil hat fact of the day. Did you know Noah here claims that only 10% of our oceans are mapped? Hmm, they know nothing. But now they're saying, the government is saying, that aliens are in our ocean. They found aliens. Hmm. How do they know that? Hmm. If only 10% is mapped? Hmm? What's going on? I think there's aliens in the ocean too. Because I you, think space is fake. What do you think? It came in the mail and y'all are opening it with me. <laughs> Ooh. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri, from Russia, with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle, and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tuzzi, a professional mapmaker came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.